Okay, what's going on everyone? So today we're looking at lead code number 78. It's called subsets. Uh, we're going to do subsets 1 and subsets 2. So I'll do subsets 2 on a different video. Uh, this is a continuation on permutations, on combinations, any of those problems. And we're going to be using a template, a backtracking template that makes life much easier to solve any problems dealing, dealing, with, um, dealing with combinations, permutations, or subsets. So here we're given an integer array nums of unique elements and we want to return all possible subsets, the power set. Uh, the solution must not contain duplicate subsets. We want to return the solution in any order. So here we have one, two, three. We have all subsets of one, two, three. An empty array, one, two, three, one and two, one and three, one, two and three. Okay, so let's, let's break this down. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this conceptually by building out the tree, and then we'll go ahead and look at a template that we're using to solve many other problems and how we can apply that template to this particular problem. And if you're not familiar with recursion, this may be difficult. It was for me when I first tried to get my head around this, but I do promise the more you practice this, the easier it gets. It, it really does get a lot easier as you go further down. So highly encourage you, if it doesn't make sense, get a pen and paper, draw out the trees, just really keep on rinsing and repeating until it clicks, and it does click eventually. Okay, so the idea here is we're given uh, an input, one, two, and three, and we're gonna build out a tree, okay? So here, we're gonna start I at, this, uh, at the zeroth index. And what we want to do in this tree is we want to create a case where we're going to exclude whatever the value is at i. And we want to include whatever the value is at i. Okay? So if we look at i, we want to create one, one branch of the tree that's going to exclude that. So we're going to have an empty slate. That's going to be our empty array. And we're going to exclude the value at i, which is just going to be the empty array. And then we're going to have one branch where we're going to include the value at i. OK, then we're going to call depth first search and we're going to increment i. So we're going to increment i, pass it into our recursive function, and increment i. And then we're going to just do the same thing at this level. So we're going to exclude the value at i, and then we're going to include the value at i. We're just going to push it onto that slate. Same thing, we're gonna exclude the value at i, and then we're gonna include by pushing it onto the slate, so we're gonna get one and two. Just gonna push that value onto the slate. Okay, and then we're gonna move one, uh, one uh, we're gonna increment i, pass it into the depth first search recursive function, and do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna exclude the value at i, so we'll just get that empty array, and then we're going to include it, which is just going to be this 3. In our slate, we're going to exclude the value at i. So that's just going to be 2. And then we're going to include the value at i. So we're going to push it onto the slate, push that 3 onto the slate. Same thing, we're going to exclude the value at i. And then we're going to push the value of i onto the slate. Okay, and then the same thing, we're going to exclude the value at i, and then we're going to include it onto the slate. Okay, and so you can see when we hit the leaf level, we are going to hit all the subsets. We're going to get all the subsets. Now, what do we want to do at this leaf level? This is going to go down depth first search, the recursive stack, like the way the way this goes down until it hits its base case when i goes out of range here because we're incrementing i on every recursive call it's going to get passed in where it's out of range and that's when we know we've hit this bottom here we've hit the base case so this this recursive call let me create our global result here so we're going to have a global result that we're going to push whatever the leaf values are we're going to make a copy of it at the leaf level and then push that into our result, okay? So here, we're gonna have depth first search, we're gonna go all the way down, it's in order, down the tree, and then we're gonna hit this base case right here, and when we hit that, what we're gonna do is make a copy of that and push that into the result, which is just gonna be an empty array, okay? And now, this is gonna travel back up, 
okay and we're going to come here and we're going to have our uh, include case so we're going to push that three onto onto our uh, slate and then go down go down the tree and we're going to make a copy and pass that into the result okay we're going to pop off that three it's going to come back up and it's going to go down here and so forth and so on until it goes through uh, the entire entire uh, input until I gets to the end okay so that's the idea this is tricky like this is what it looks like conceptually when you write out the code it doesn't really look like this you have to imagine the call stack and how what's happening at every level and that takes a little time so I highly encourage you to draw this out and then try to step through it level by level after we write out the code just you know get a pen and paper draw this all out once it clicks it's like magic then all of a sudden all these other problems that deal with with a similar pattern you can just apply this template to and solve them uh, uh, really quickly okay so let's go over time and space complexity let's think about that uh, so at each level what are we doing we're making two choices we're making include versus exclude okay and it's going down each level and at each level each one of those choices we're making two choices on it so what I mean by that is here at this level we're making two choices and for each one of these, we're making two choices. So that's going to be, um, well, we can say this is going to be one. For this one, we're going to make two choices. So times two, right? And for each one of these, we're going to make four choices. Okay. And then for each one of these, we're going to make uh, two choices on each one of those four. So that's going to be uh, eight. Okay, so we're basically doing two to the n, right? Where n is the, the, the input. Two times two times two, because that's the levels that we're going down on the tree, right? Now, we have one more issue, is that when we get to the bottom, we're making a scan of this. And worst case, we're going to have to make a scan that has n elements, okay? So we're gonna to have to do that, whatever two to the n is, and then times n, because we have to do this result operation, make a copy of that which is linear. So our time complexity on this is O of two to the n times n. Now what about space? If we're not counting the output space, right? Like this result, which is our output, if we're not counting that, then the space that we have is whatever's in our slate and the height of that tree through this recur uh, on the recursion call stack, okay? So that's just gonna be n, right? So for space, we're gonna have uh, n, and then if we count in what's in our result, that's gonna be two to the n, Okay, so we're going to get 2 to the n times n on space as well. So it's not very efficient, and you can see that's why, you know, our constraints is the length is not going to be more than 10, because this is just not a very efficient thing. Now, in, when we get into the further problems, you know, like n queens and target sum and generate parentheses, we're going to see that we can use backtracking as a way to prune the tree. So we're not going down every single branch of the tree we know that at some point in this tree if there's a constraint we don't have to go down the rest of that tree and that's backtracking and that's a way to kind of make this a little more efficient but worst case we're looking at you know two the two to the n times n which is terrible right okay so now we're just going to apply a pattern this is the backtracking pattern and what we do here is we create a global result Okay, in this case, we're going to use an array, and then we're going to, let me just go ahead and comment this out. And then we're going to have a depth first search um, recursive helper. So depth first search, this is going to take in an I, a nums, and a slate. Okay, and now what is our base case? We want to have a base case 
anytime we have recursion, we need to have a base case. So what, what, it, what is our base case when we get to this leaf level? Well, I has to be out of range here. So that's the idea. We want to make sure I is out of range. And that means that we are at the leaf level. So if I equals nums.length, then we know we're at a leaf level. Then what, we, what do we want to do? We want to push that, whatever's at this leaf level, into the global result here. We can't push the slate itself because it's the same array that we're using, and that's just a way to save space. So we're going to make a copy of this at the leaf level and push that into the result. So we'll do result.push slate.slice. Okay, and then we'll return. Now we want to have our depth first search recursive case. And so what are we doing here? You can see here that we are either excluding or we're including. Okay, so if we're going to um, exclude, then we just want to do depth first search, i plus one, nums, and pass in the slate. Okay, we're not, we're not uh, uh, putting anything into the slate, we're excluding it out, and then we're just going down the tree. So we're gonna go this way. Here's our slate, we don't do anything to it, we just increment i and pass it down the, down the call stack. Okay, so let me write here, exclude. And then the other case is we wanna include. Okay. And so here we're going to add this to the slate. So we'll do slate.push nums at i call depth first search increment i pass in nums and then add our slate. And then we want to pop this off the slate. So when it returns back up to this level, once it, you know, when it goes back up, we want to pop that off so that way we can use that same slate array throughout our entire tree. We don't have to create new space on every level. Okay, and then all we wanna do at the bottom here, let me just make some space here, is we just call our uh, depth first search helper. We'll set i to zero, pass in nums from the input, and then our slate will just be an empty array, and then we just return our global result. Okay, so I'll kind of zoom out so you can kind of see the whole code. And that's it, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and we're good. And we get great time and space complexity on this compared to you know, all the other submissions. So it's a, it's a very powerful way to solve these problems that are dealing with subsets, combinations, backtracking, um, uh, uh, you know, permutations, any of those things, any of those words come up uh, in any of these interview questions, you can just apply this template. But it's really important to know what's going on under the hood of this template. And we're, we're creating a tree. And that's, I think that's really important to understand because um, then if you need to make modifications, you know where to make those modifications. Are you including or excluding? Do you need to move through it? Um, do you need to add a, a backtracking case, a constraint? what is the base case, all of those things become much easier to add and, and manipulate for the particular problem that you're dealing with. Okay, so that is lead code number 78, subsets one. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see everyone on the next one.